Hello there. Hello there. Welcome back to the Sky Guys podcast here. Well, we are out of the animation live action bracket month. It is now time to get into some fun stuff for the holidays. We're going to today dive into Tales of the Jedi. Season two was announced a few months ago at Celebration. Today we're going to sort of rank some of the best candidates we feel would be up for the job. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Phillips. Join me today, as always, Pete Constantori is here. Pete, how are you? Doing well. Um, we finished up our bracket last week. We're talking this week about Tales of the Jedi, so I'm very excited to talk to you guys again and see uh, and see what you guys think here for Season 2. Yep, also with us here today, uh, the Chief Creative Officer of this podcast, Nick Brad is here. Nick, how are you? Doing great. Very excited about this. I really love Tales of the Jedi Season 1. Very happy to talk about Season 2. All right. As always, Pete, people want to subscribe to us on the Sky Guys podcast. So Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, Spotify, Amazon, all your usual suspects. Simply search for the Sky Guys favorite podcast platforms. The final episode's there. So you want to make sure you subscribe because you got some fun stuff coming up over the rest of this month. Like we always say, you don't want to miss out on all this great content, this off-season content, as we'll call it, since there's no uh, major shows that are actually airing week to week um, for Star Wars. So uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of this cool stuff that we're giving you guys. Yep, and uh, Nick, people want to follow uh, us on social media. How can they do that? They can follow at Sky Guys Podcast, and they can do that on Instagram, on Twitter, on Threads, and on TikTok. Yep, you can also follow me on. You can also follow the YouTube version, Mike Phillips on YouTube. Video version of the podcast on YouTube. We have all our fun graphics here. I'm bringing a different prop out here today. I'm going to bring out uh, a Yoda here. One of our heads. Okay, what, what is that? It's a talking Yoda. What does he say? You will forget the question. Sense the force in my left hand. Press it and answer you. I will. Yeah, so he said it's a magic eight ball version of Yoda. That's very cool. Yeah, hopefully the audio came through for you guys on the audio version here. Did it come through for you guys? I did a little bit. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I put it next to the microphone. Hopefully, he picked up, but he basically was a, it's a, it's basically the magic eight ball version of Yoda. Very cool. All right, so Nick, let's get some Star Wars. We got some stuff to discuss. We do. This came out today, I believe. The Skeleton Crew might be delayed until holiday of 2024. That is about a year away. This is basically a We were under the long. impression that this show was going to be released in January. Yeah. This looks like it may be delayed 10, 11 months. Uh, Pete, that's not good. Uh, actually, I think it might be good. I think this has to do with uh, Dave Filoni being promoted. I think he probably took a look at the project and said, no, we're not releasing it like this. So I think it might be uh, good for the actual show. Not good for us Star Wars fans kind of just waiting around now, but I'd rather take a 10-month delay than them kind of pushing out crap and we are sitting here on the podcast, you know, bashing it. So I think it has to do, and this is purely speculation. I don't have any confirmation on it. I think it has to do with Dave Filoni's promotion. Yeah, I also say, Nick, the rumor is right now that Acolytes to come out first. The light may not come out to August with the Ahsoka window. So we might get Bad Batch for any of these shows. Maybe. We'll see. We got Bad Batch only a year ago, about, or a little bit more or so, or excuse me, a little less than a year ago. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, the next it, thing I have here, go ahead, Mike. Is it, plus, it's animated. So they could have been working on it during the, during the writers and actors' strikes, just animating the, the stuff. And then all you have to do is get the actors to come in and do the voice work. True. True. Um, the next thing here is the Kodor remake. We have a quote here. Mike, would you like to read the quote? I think you should read it. You're the news guy. You can... Sure. It is deader than dog shit. <laughs> so, I, I have so many thoughts. We're not expecting that. We're not expecting that one to come out. Yeah. To me, why the hell are you investing in this in this thing? Yeah. Yeah, Yoda, I did not need that question answered, but I will say in terms of this animation, this game here, why are you investing in this property? Which I read in another article that Lucasfilm is apparently quote unquote horny to make. Why are you investing in it if you're going to hand it out to a third rate developer and then abandon it the first night of trouble, Pete? Money. <laughs> I mean, that's all I can think of. I don't know. I'm seeing reports that it's still alive. There's reports that it's completely dead. I, I think no one knows. And it's just. It's probably not going to happen. And no Maybe they're trying right to now. throw you off the game, and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, here it is. Enjoy. You know? We'll see next Thursday. The Game Awards are next Thursday night. People may be releasing something. A little trailer. Maybe they release a full-fledged trailer and say it's coming out holiday 23. <laughs> That'd be majorly broken if it does. Yeah. All right, what else we got? 
no way I'm pronouncing this name right. Uh, Kihi Kwan. And am I supposed to know Kihi? Yeah, he was in uh, Everything Ever All Once. He's short round from Indiana Jones. Oh. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Well, he wants to join the Star Wars franchise. Good for him. Yeah. Doesn't ever. So does everyone else. (laughs) And lastly, here is Taika Waititi. He says he has four movies to finish before he even starts his Star Wars movie, and it will piss people off. It's pissing me off that we keep talking about it. I put this at a 1% chance this is made. I think it's less than 1%, Pete. I think this is just great marketing and and PR by uh, either himself or his team. It keeps his name in the Star Wars loop, right? I mean, I think we've all said it. This movie's probably not happening, but he keeps coming up in news when it comes to Star Wars, so he's staying relevant, uh, at least for the writer's end of it. You know, the people are writing these articles, so... Uh, he's doing something right, you know? Yeah, I think, Nick, if this movie comes out, we have to go to the midnight release, the three of us, because we've been dunking on so much. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, There's one more piece of thing I have, one more piece of news that I have. I may have mentioned this already. I don't remember, so you have to let me know, is um, there is a South Park special that came out called Joining the Panderverse, and if you haven't seen it, watch it, because they dig in very deep on Kathleen Kennedy and the rest of Disney and Star Wars. <laughs> You're not mentioning it on the, on the air, so now you have. Yeah, I, I, I thought I did, but I'm not sure. Oh, I mentioned it maybe over text to you guys. But yeah, they go in very deep on Disney and Lucasfilm, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy in particular. And it's uh, pretty funny. All right, is that it for the news department? That's it. All right, so we're, this week we're going to rank candidates who should be in Tales of the Jedi Season 2, which is Hopefully coming next year, if not early 2025. So, Pete, remind the audience here what Tales of the Jedi Season 1 was about. Yeah, we had a little bit of Count Dooku. Um, we had a little bit of Ahsoka. It was pretty much showing us some some information that we didn't have already when it came to our Clone Wars or the episodes. And episodes, I mean the movies, episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, we see a lot of characters that may have been mentioned in the episodes. Now we're actually seeing them do stuff. So it's more of just extra content. Um, good stuff could be prequels. So we we saw it was it was prequel content for both Count Dooku and Ahsoka. Um, and and I'm not wrong. It was just them two, right? I'm not missing yeah, anyone. It was those two. It was three Dooku right. and Ahsoka. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's cool little content. I think last season, the first season, we didn't need the Ahsoka stuff. I think the Count Dooku stuff was really really cool. Um, so that's pretty much it. You get pretty much some prequel content, some extra information of where these characters came from before you meet them, uh, when you do in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, I definitely think like, we're going to follow the same rule. We're going to do, assume they're doing six shorts, two Jedi. I think we think that's a safe way to approach this. Yes. I think that's safe to say. I think maybe they do nine shorts, three Jedi, but I don't think they would do any more than that. Um, My question to you is, though, how are we going to do this podcast? I have a ranking. I'm sure you have a ranking. I'm sure Pete has a ranking. How are we going to share these rankings with our with our uh, with our loyal fan base here? So what we're going to do, then we're going to go through the list one at a time. Then we'll sort of say, okay, we're going to start with uh, we're going to start in a minute with uh, Balin Skull. We'll put him to number one. Then we'll sort of debate as we go on. Okay, he uh, higher or lower than Balin? Sort of make the collective rankings. We sort of just just debate it out. All right, so maybe maybe we'll meet, we'll start with Balin because that's alphabetical. I'll say I have Balin in my one slot or two slot or eight slot or nine slot, whatever it is. And we'll all talk and then agree on a spot. Yeah, I think we'll do that because Balin is the first one here, and Balin is the the reason why people on the internet are going nuts about this because obviously following the tragic uh, death of Ray Stevenson prior to the filming of Ahsoka, that we'd not get a chance to see him live out the story of this character. One thought here is that we can get some of the backstory of Balin's skull a bit in a Tales of the Jedi style short where we get a couple of flash of his life, maybe in the Clone Wars era. Maybe we get some of him in, you know, the timeline where Rebels is before he gets to Ahsoka. Maybe, and I may form continue his story post Ahsoka. So, Pete, any thoughts on Balin being a Tales of the Jedi candidate? So, I think he's a good candidate. I think for me, I'm more interested to see Balin in the the present quote unquote uh, meaning more about him in Ahsoka timeline and what he was doing. Um, obviously it's going to be very difficult to recast and, and um, you know, obviously the, the tragic passing of the actor, but 
I, I think I want more of that than like a prequel or something along those lines. Um, you know, more backstory. I don't think I want the backstory as much as I want of in the now, what's happening now with Balin Skull. Uh, Nick, how do you feel about Balin? Uh, just to be clear before we even continue here, we have 12 people here, right? Yep. Okay, I want to make sure I did that right. See, I have Balin right in the middle of the road. I I would like to see some backstory on him, but I'm not crazy to see it. Like, I'm more interested in what he's up to right now. Like Pete said, there are people on this list that I would rather see the backstory on. There are people that I would rather see Balin than them. So I have him pretty much right in the middle. And I, I, the way I'm looking at this is, if it's going to follow what season one did, it's going to show backstory. So if I say to you, oh, I'd rather them show this, well, then that's not going to happen. They're going to show backstory. So if you're going to show me backstory, I have Balin at a six out of 12. Yeah, about that's where about where I was coming into it. Plus, I did see the interview that Dave Filoni did with Variety. They did the feature about like all this stuff. And he said that they're still figuring out the direction that they want to go with Balin after Ray Stevenson's death. So I would be surprised if he's here. But for now, we'll start about one of one. We'll probably end up dropping as we go. Right, guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. So. Next up on our list is ours bouncing around errors here. Mr. Maul. Uh, Nick, what do you think about Mr. Maul? And I have Maul incredibly high on the list. And and I think more, the more Maul, the better. I've we've talked about Maul so many times over the last couple of years on the podcast here, which, by the way, it's been almost like three years since we've been doing this. But, um, I mean, Maul there's so much mystery behind him and they keep showing more and there's still so much mystery. So I have Maul incredibly. I am Maul my number three overall. Uh, Pete, I feel Mr. Maul. Yeah. I'm, I'm the highest on Maul. I think I have him at number one. Uh, we meet this character out of thin air in episode one. Um, not much backstory there. We get an incredible storyline in clone wars into rebels. We get a little bit of that storyline again in the solo movie. So I think I would love to see more of Maul's origins. So he is actually number one on my list. So he is the highest for me. Yeah, for me, I had him a little lower. I had him down at like five in my rankings. Because for me, I feel like the problem I had with the Maul angle is that like we saw so much in Clone Wars of like where he was up to and so on and so forth. I mean, Unless you're giving me that unproduced arc of him like breaking free from Palpatine or some stuff that's going on with him, like that with maybe the abandoned solo story and why was they make put in the Lando. Like I feel like there's not a ton of room, as much room to play with Maul as you guys think there is. I mean, you have years before episode one. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know we how have nothing we have nothing pre him getting cut in half. I mean, like that's literally years of timeline. They can try to We've gotten some like information on it but we've never seen any of it i think there's a comic book going on out there with some wall stuff i think pre-episode one if i remember correct i think there is as well all right so i think we're agreeing for now though wall over bay definitely above but yeah yeah for sure all right so mall is currently number one on the list so now yeah. we'll go to the next person on our list here and this is a original trilogy character here how we feel i'll start the case here for luke skywalker i had number uh i had him i had him right around this range so i have a number seven in my list, I will blow up Balin. I think it's the thing that appeals to me about doing a Luke Tales of the Jedi here is that, like, we have a long distance to go between where he is in the original trilogy and where he is in the sequels. We have not seen a animated series in this time frame, which I think will be interesting to see what the animation style look like for a original trilogy character here. Plus, Mark Hamill has said that he's done playing the character. This would be an interesting way for them to continue the Luke storyline without recasting him. So, uh, Pete, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I actually have him fairly high. Um, I have him at uh, right above Balin's skull. I think I was in the middle of the pack as well with um, with Nick. So I had Luke like at a, at a four or a five, um, only because I'd like to see him trying to train the Jedi of the future. Um, I feel like we've talked about it. Nick's talked about it extensively on the podcast about how we haven't seen any of that, and it'd be cool to get that timeline. You just mentioned that there hasn't been much in that timeline when it comes to Luke's story. So I think there's actually a lot to unpack there that they could do. Um, pre that timeline, don't think there's a lot of wiggle room, obviously, because of the original trilogies. But um, yeah, I have, him, I have him pretty much in the middle of the pack there, a little bit above Balin. All right, uh, Nick, what do you think about Luke? 
A uh, question before I give my opinion here. Is it possible? Do you have this live list on your screen? Is it possible to share this? I think it would be a lot, a lot easier for people to follow along. I'll start a separate document with that. Yeah, because I think it'd be a lot easier if you're watching the video version to follow along. And even us, too, to not keep track of it in our heads. But um, so as I said earlier, I think if they do tell the Jedi, it's going to be what it was last season, which was the past and showing the intro to becoming a Jedi. And in that case, I have Luke at 11 because that's what a new hope is. Yeah. I don't see that happening. I don't see like showing Luke younger than before he met Obi-Wan or I know he knew who Obi-Wan was. We see that in the Kenobi series, but like showing him in that point, you're not seeing anything that any lessons that he learned as a Jedi. You're seeing him as a farm boy. I don't see any value in that. So I have I have Luke at eleven. I'm not interested in it. I think that's what episode four was for. All right, so we'll go with the argument here. So Luke over Balin, Pete, yes or no? Uh, I say yes. I also say yes, Nick. I'm assuming you say no. Oh yeah, I say no. With five spots in between. All right. So collectively, we're putting him higher there. So Luke higher than Maul, Pete, yes or no? No. Nick is also a no. So that's where he's going to stand right now. So here's our live rundown here on the board. So Maul, Luke, Balin is our power ranking right yeah, now. Yeah, I think just keep this up while we're doing it. It leaves a lot easier for us to pay attention for anyone watching the video version and for us while we're doing this to see this stuff. Well, I'm, I'm going to cut back and forth to it because I don't want to leave this up the entire time because they can only see our face in a little box otherwise. Sure. All right. So next up on the list here, uh, a sequel trilogy character for the first time, Kylo Ren. I think there's potential here, but uh, Pete, would you like to start us out on Kylo? So for me, I have Kylo under Balin. I have him at the, is that the seven spot if I'm doing my math correctly here. Um, I think he's an interesting character. I think there's a lot to unpack with that character, but I but I also don't think we have the potential to have what we have with Darth Vader, right? Where there's a whole prequel trilogy dedicated to that arc of how he becomes Darth Vader or how he becomes Kylo Ren. So I don't know if there's much to unpack there. I think the character winds up in a weird spot too after the sequels end. So I just don't know what else to show. I think, you know, episode seven starts strong with this Kylo Ren character. We kind of know where he comes from. We understand it. I really don't know if there's much, much more. Um, the people under him, um, I feel even less about. So that's why I have him about like about a seven or eight. Uh, I'll throw my Kylo thoughts out here because I, I had him, I think, towards the bottom of the list as well. I have him down at like 11. I think there's two problems here. It's number one, like we got the origin story of how he turns the dark side shown to us in The Last Jedi, which means we don't, we're not going to get that shown to us again, which I think was one of the big appeals to him here. And Nick, I don't know how much ground we're going to get showing him doing dark side things between that point and The Force Awakens. I actually have Kylo very high on the list. And Pete had mentioned one of the reasons that he wanted to see a Luke Tales of the Jedi was to see what Luke does in his training. And I think this is how you get it, by showing a Kylo Tales of the Jedi, not a Luke Tales of the Jedi. So I think you see that. And I think you see Kylo learning to be a Jedi, which we didn't see. We just saw him turn bad. And I also think we get to see Snoke's manipulate manipulating him. Excuse me, Snoke manipulating him. It's something we didn't get to see, which I all of which I would love to see. And I have Kylo very high in my number four seed overall. All right. So let's go back to the big board here and sort of have our discussion here. So uh we'll put we'll put this one up here. I gotta get back to that tab, but uh where is it? Okay, here we go. Give me one second here as I close that one here. But this is being a little little annoying, so bear with me, but Here's our order here. So, uh, Pete, higher or lower than Balin on Kylo? So, I actually, Nick kind of swayed me a little bit. I think I want him higher than Balin. Um, I think I may switch my stance on him. So, definitely higher. Uh, Nick, I was doing your higher? I want him higher than Balin and Luke. All right. So, he's going above Balin. So, now, higher than Luke is a tough sell for me. I think there's a lot more I want to do with Luke. So, I would leave him lower. Pete, where are you on him on this? Um, I'm going to say higher only because I think the bad guy is always more interesting. However, I feel like it's very tied. I think if you get Luke in that era, you get Kylo in that era. I think they're one and one like Nick was saying. All right. So then nobody's picking over Maul, correct? Uh, no, not for me. Nick will not either here. So that's the end of the Kylo debate. Kylo has risen number two on the board right now. So 
Next up here for us, we're going back to the prequels. Mace Windu here. So, uh, Nick, we got to start us out on Mace. I have Mace fairly middle of the road. I would like to see Mace, but at the same time, I've seen a lot of Mace in that we saw him in the Tales of the Jedi season one. Now, there's stuff prior to that that I'd like to see, which is why I have him middle of the road and not way on the bottom. But we've seen a lot of it already. So although there's still maybe 70% of his story to unpack, maybe 75, I think we've seen 25, 30% of it. So I'm not super high on it, but I would definitely welcome that. So I had Mace at number eight overall, and I'd be happy to move him up or down a slot if you guys could persuade me. Uh, I have a number 10 for a lot of reasons you mentioned here, because I feel like with Mace, like we covered some of his ground in Tales of the Jedi. We know he was trained by Yoda at one point. So I just don't think there's a lot here. I think that, like, if we had interesting stuff fleshed out for him, we would have done it already. And, Pete, how do you feel? I mean, I'm really interested in Mace. I actually have him three on my board. Um, and judging by, and I could be completely wrong on this, so if this gets to the internet, please don't roast the hell out of me. I am I correct in thinking that the orange lightsabers are a mix of good and good and bad, or the dark side of the force, light side of force, but... A little purple. bit more toward the dark, and then the purple lightsabers more toward the light. Yeah. I I kind of want to see if that theory is correct. I kind of want to see why Mace Windu was kind of dabbling in the dark side a little bit. How he becomes a Jedi Master on the Council that's pushing Anakin away. So I think I think there's a lot for me to unpack there, not just intellectually, but also just the character itself. We I mean Nick said it. We don't we probably have like about 70, 75 percent of this this character's story that we don't even know. Um, so I have him very high. I have him at number three. All right. So here's the board here. Nick, Nick, are you putting him over Balin? Yes. Uh, Pete said yes. So he's going to go over yes. Balin here. Over Luke Skywalker, Pete. Yes. Nick? Yes. Okay. So over Kylo Ren, Nick? No. Uh, Pete? I'm a yes on that one. I'm going to go no on that one. So we're going to put him in at number three. So that's the running. That's the that's the top five we covered so far. And remember, if at the end of this we're going to have th two or three recommendations that we think are going to be who we should see next year. So we'll go now to number six on the list here. I'm gonna I'll talk up the case for Qui Gon Jinn, who we got a little bit of in Tales of Jedi season one with uh, Count Dooku stuff here. I do think there's angles I want to see of this. I know where his story ends, but I do like that he becomes more of a maverick after his time with uh, Count Dooku. I guess eventually him training Obi Wan be fun. May get some stuff we didn't see in Episode One here. I do think that there's there's potential here with uh, Qui Gon Jinn. So I'm gonna throw that out here because we did get a secret moment from Qui Gon in the Season One here. So uh, Pete, how do you feel about Qui Gon? I'm not super high on Qui Gon. I think I just don't know if I'm that interested in much more than what we've seen already with Season One of of Tales of the Jedi and also just the the prequel trilogy. Um, I know I'm sure there's a bunch more that could be told about Qui-Gon, but I'm just, I'm not that high on Qui-Gon. So I actually have him pretty low. I have him at 13, uh, 13, geez. We have 12. I have him at 13. No, I have him about like 10. So two above the bottom. Uh, Nick, your take on Qui-Gon. I'm in the same boat. It's been a little higher on him, but I'm in, I'm in more or less the same boat than Pete is. I have him at seven. I just feel like, um... There's not much you can show me that is really that interesting. That's really going to be like blowing me away in terms of the story. And to be honest, I feel like a bad guy works so much better than a good guy in this show. So I'd so much rather see, except for maybe an exception or two, all of the villains we have listed over any of the heroes, except for maybe an ex one or two exceptions. Yeah, I think we have one. I think like last year we had one hero, one villain. So I could see that sort of happening again. I, I could see that happening again too, but I think the way they might do it is I would like to do this at the end if you think we have time. I would like to do, okay, here's our list. Now give me two or three that you think are going to be it. Not what you are hoping they do, what you think they'll actually do. I feel like that could be an interesting little topic yeah. for us to discuss. Yeah, not what we want, what we think they're going to do. Yeah, because I have different opinion on that. All right, so let's go our rankings here. So higher or lower than Balin on Qui-Gon, Nick? Uh, why don't I just tell you where I have him, and then we can all say where we have him. I have him on this list right below Mace. Okay, Pete? Uh, lower than Balin for me. 
I have him higher than Balin, lower than Luke. So I'm going to put Qui Gon. There he goes. Right. All right. So that makes sense. So now we're going to go to the next one on the list here, which is our king bad guy, Palpatine. So Pete starts on uh, Sidious himself. Super high, right below Maul for me, number two. Um, another evil character that we don't get much of before what we see him. We have a lot of Palpatine. Don't get me wrong. We have a lot. We have six movies, pretty much, of some story that has either Emperor Palpatine or Chancellor Palpatine. That is just what it is. However, I am still super intrigued on his character. I still want to want to know more. I want to know how he gets trained. I may want to see him with his old Sith Master. Um, I, I, I just think that there's so much you could do with that character. You could probably make seasons of shows about Palpatine prior. Doesn't have to be Tales of the Jedi. So I have him very high, um, at number two for me. Yeah, for me, he's like four. I, I want it, but like, I don't think this might be the right format for it. I think like, I want the full show of like, how the hell did this guy slip under the Jedi's nose? He kind of like the greatest mess, like. Sith Master of the entire galaxy. I I think that's more better served for a longer form story than like three animated shorts. I mean, the only thing I will add, Nick, before you go, I'm so sorry, is we had Ahsoka, but we've had Ahsoka in other forms too. Okay. Didn't necessarily mean that it ruined it. So that's that's the only reason why. Sorry. Right. Nick, go ahead. So Mike, you make a great point. And I think it would serve better in a longer show. Almost like if the Alkalite had him in, or I know it won't, but like something of that caliber, like a show. But for me, if you're going to show me the past of one of our Jedi slash Sith, it's not even remotely close. This is one by a long shot for me. Okay, so one by a long shot. Yeah, like this was not, like when I saw this list, I immediately like started by putting it on the top. All right, so we'll go to the Q, go to the queue here. So, uh, Nick says you're on the top of this list here. Pete, where is on your list on this? Group? I, I thinking about it, he goes above Maul too. He's at the top of my list. All right. So Palpatine's our new number one on the list. Which for me personally, I had him basically I had him that high of this group so far. So I agree with this. So I haven't hit my top three yet, which is interesting to discuss here. But next up on very interesting because it's very interesting because I have some of my bottom people on the list still. All right. Next up here. The uh, guy who we heard answering questions before on the podcast here, Yoda. So, uh, Nick, give us the Yoda pitch. So, Yoda is a very, very sensitive subject. So, before I even start, I have Yoda at number two overall, right behind Palpatine. I think right. it's the most one of the most interesting things there is. But it's almost like an unwritten rule. They're not going to give you Yoda's backstory, and that's like a thing. We don't know the name of his species. We don't know the name of the planet they're from. Like that's. Something that I don't know if they hold it like sacred in, in a way, but I still want to see it. So besides Palpatine, I have Yoda right there. Yeah, I think Yoda is very high for me because I think just because, again, we have so much time we could play with. Like you could show us stuff in Star Wars we have never seen in terms of timeline because he's there. Like you could see like right. Yoda becoming like you could see Yoda at Grogu's age, like as a little one being involved in storyline. You could have Yoda like. And in 200 years, you're in the High Republic. You have a lot of stuff you could do with Yoda here. So, uh, Pete, what do you think about Yoda? I have Yoda in the middle. Um, I I think that, I mean, I've said it before, to see Yoda in his prime would be kind of crazy. I, I'd like something new. I feel like we've done Yoda a lot. Um, I know that kind of goes against what I just said about Palpatine. However, I'm not as intrigued in Yoda than I am in Palpatine. I think Yoda is clear-cut what he is. He's a Jedi Master. He's the best, and he's really smart and wise. I mean, I just don't know how intrigued I am about the character. Um, I love the character. I'm not saying Yoda's a bad character. So I just I have him in the middle. I have him, you know, just right above Balin. All right, so here's our list here. So, uh, Pete, you said he's above Balin. That's it on this list? Uh, hang on. This list is a little small for me. Um, I would also put him above Qui-Gon. Okay, so Nick, where do you have him? Right under Palpatine. I have him under Kylo. So he's got to be four on the list right now. And our top three is villains at the moment. That usually makes sense. We have no villains left. No, we do not. We have some interesting ones to come, though, here. So the controversial one here, I think, uh, 
I'll start with the case for Ray because I mean, obviously, I think this would be sort of opposite of what we've done with Tales Jedi so far, like where like Tales Jedi season one was backstory. This would be a little bit of forward story because we have 15 years between when we're going to see her again in the next movie to now to where she is at the end of the sequel trilogy. I think using something like this could fill some of that backstory a little bit would be helpful. Sort of like pre-planning the backstory, planting seeds of the movie. I think that's something I, I think would be interesting here. But she was low on my list. I had her down at number two. I had her down at number nine here. So uh, what do you think, uh, Nick? I have her dead last. Uh, for a variety of reasons. Number one being, if they stick to the same format, she'll be doing nothing. She didn't do anything in her childhood. She was a scavenger. So there's not something I want to see. And if they're skipping ahead 15 years to her movie, there's a reason. Because nothing happened in those 15 years. Then you could say we don't know that. But at the same time, if something did happen, then there's a problem. Then why did she just sacrifice everything and go all out and kill the emperor officially and do all this just for another threat to arrive less than 15 years from now? I think either way, if they make this, it'd be a disaster. I think there's no spot for it. It just doesn't add up. And for that reason, I have Ray at 12. Uh, Pete, where was Ray on your list? I don't have her at the bottom. Um, I think there's a couple more characters that deserve to be on the bottom. Um, I feel like you can do a lot with this character. Um, unfortunately, this character was kind of driven driven in a weird direction from the sequels. So... I don't see it being the most horrible thing, seeing something different or seeing some sort of, I, I agree with Nick. I don't want backstory. I'd like something that is some filler, even if it's minuscule, I rather that than a backstory. Um, I, I have her like mid to low. So like in the nine range, um, because I still, I still feel like we still have a little bit left with that character. And I feel like it could be the character can be redeemed a little bit. All right, so here's our list here of this of these eight we have so far. Where where do you have her, Nick? Last. Uh, Pete, I had her at nine, so it's going to be last on this list right now. All right, so she's going to be last on this list here. That was an easy one. I would have put her above. Uh, I would put her above Qui Gon. That's where I would have gone. So not super high, but I think on this tier, I feel like that makes sense here. Next up on the list here. Ezra Bridger here. I'll make the case for Ezra here. I have another case for this one here. I do think we have the we have elements in Rebels we could see him show up in. We could get some more like moments with Kanan maybe and like scenes that we never saw in the Rebels show. We have 10 years of unexplained time that he was on this planet. We could get into that as well. I do think there's a lot of ground you can cover with Ezra in a Tales of the Jedi kind of format here. And he's going to be one of our main characters going forward. So it's Good to get a little more depth on him. Uh, Pete, how do you feel about this? So if I wasn't so intrigued with the character, I would put him dead last. And the reason why I say that is because we still have more of present-day Ezra. We literally have the backstory of Ezra up until he leaves on the ship with Thrawn. And I think it would be a mistake to do anything in those 10 years where he's gone because the mystery of is he alive or is he dead kind of goes away in Ahsoka. So let's say you were watching... You didn't watch Ahsoka and you watched Rebels and you decided to watch Tales of the Jedi. Now you know he's alive before the grand reveal of of um, of uh, of Ezra being alive in Ahsoka. And I think that's also Star Wars has done this, too, where I've talked about it immensely, how Empire Strikes Back loses that shock factor once you watch the prequels. If you watch the prequels before the, the originals, you knew Darth Vader is Luke's father. Um, so. I am intrigued in the character. We still have a lot more that we can do with the character presently that we don't have to go back and do Tales of the Jedi for. So that's why I have him fairly low, but not dead last. I actually have him under Ray because of we have so much more we can explore and so much great stuff we can explore without needing Tales of the Jedi. Uh, Nick, what about Ezra for you? I have Ezra pretty low as well. Not at the bottom, but pretty close to the bottom. Now, when I made my ranking... I thought to myself, all right, Tales of the Jedi, what was it last season? What's it going to be next season? And in my mind, it's, all right, basically I'm ranking who I want the backstory of. And if you're telling me, do you want Ezra's backstory? My answer is no, I don't. I kind of know where it is. He's an orphan. In, in, you know, he's on the fall. There's not much to tell. So in that sense, I have him fairly low, not the bottom, which is why I think about it. Why my, my people that I had on the bottom were Ray and Luke in that order. 
from 12 and 11 because I don't want their backstory. I don't need it. It's just them being alone. And Ezra falls in that same category. I don't want that backstory. So for me, Ezra got nine. All right. So let's go to the list now. See where he's going on the list here. For me, I had him very high. I had him like up under Yoda. That's where I've had him on, on this group here. So, uh, Nick, where was he for you? I have him in between Balin and Ray. Pete? I actually have him under Ray. All right. So the high mark it seems going to be is the the ba- the Balin um, between Balin and Ray is what we all agree on here. The two majority agrees on here. So that's where he's going to go. All right. So we have two left before we get to our final ranking here. So one that I threw in here, I'm curious to get your weight take on this one because technically she's a Jedi, even though she doesn't finish the training. Leia Organa. Pete. So I have her very low. Um, second to dead last. Um, we got Leia's backstory, if you will, for like a half a second in the Obi-Wan show. And as cool as it was to see Leia as a child, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, wow, this is where she came. Like, I didn't care about the backstory of Leia. Um, obviously, Leia is the, one of the better characters, best characters in Star Wars when it comes to everything that she's done. She's a senator. She's part of the rebellion. There's a lot. There's a lot there. But I feel like we've already told a lot of her story. And I feel like if we just keep beating, you know, this storyline to, you know, to, to, to no end, I feel like we're just going to ruin it. So I think we just need to let Leia's story breathe, allow the character to be who she is, and leave it alone. So that's why I have her pretty close to uh, dead last here. For me, the reason why I put her on the list, I think it's worth discussion. I did not have her high because I think if I was the principal of the show, is that like this could be a creative vehicle to give us some Leia story between the original trilogy and the sequels when we don't have Carrie Fisher anymore. I think that's the reason why I put her on the list. I think that's a worthy argument to have, whether this is the vehicle for it. But Nick, how do you feel? Uh, I had it ranked really, really low, but the more I'm thinking about it, it would be kind of interesting in the same way that I found Kylo to be interesting. In that showing how she trained would be similar to the time that Kylo is being manipulated by Snow could be an interesting thing to see, but I I don't think it would work well. It's, I I don't know. Who cares? Yeah, well, we'll see. I think the internet would also scream bloody Murphy. This, this she was the subject of this, but on the tier list, where would you put her, Pete? I I would put her below Ezra, in, in between Ray and Ezra. Um, I think just character wise, yeah. I just I just don't know how much more story we can give. I just I feel like that story's been drawn out already. So I would I would at least. Would between nine and ten. Uh Nick. I have the same. All right. So that's where she's that's where she's gonna go. I had her I had her up above like Qui-Gon on my list. Just for the reasons I mentioned. Uh this group. It, I mean the, the more you talk about it, it is it does sound more interesting than when I ranked it. We can think about that post return of the Jedi era, which we seem it seems like everything is that era now, but it, it would be a little interesting to see it, but nah. All right. Last but not least here on our list, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, uh, Nick, you want to talk about him? So I had Kenobi towards the top of the list, not in the top three, but pretty high up there. And, I mean, it should be an interesting thing to see. You'd see him training with Qui-Gon. You'd see some of his backstory. Maybe you see some of his relationship with the the Duchess Satine. I don't know. Um, Honestly, don't think we're gonna get it though, because I just I, I'll explain when we do our little uh, we do our little what we actually think, which will be in a minute or two. But I, I think it's a very good choice, but not the top choice. So I'm gonna put Obi Wan at four, maybe five in that area. I'd love to see it, but there are some that I'd rather see more. Uh, Pete, quick thoughts on Obi Wan? Dead last, absolutely dead last. Not because I don't like the character, not because I don't think the character deserves more respect than dead last does. We have seen everything from Obi-Wan. There is a ton of content about Obi-Wan. If you look at this list, every single character except for Obi-Wan has some own untold story or untold line that we don't know about that we could say, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to know more about that. I don't think we need Qui-Gon training Obi-Wan. Now, 
to backtrack a little bit, if we get Qui-Gon in those early years, Obi-Wan's probably going to be involved. However, I'm going to be more interested in Qui-Gon than Obi-Wan because we get Obi-Wan when he's pretty much a Padawan in Episode 1. We see his growth. We get him in between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. I I think we're good on Obi-Wan. Again, all the respect to the character, one of the best characters in Star Wars. I just think when it comes to this list, there is a lot more intriguing character storylines that we can learn from other than his. Yeah, for me, I, I had him number three on my list. He was right behind Palpatine and Yoda. I feel like for me, it's like, yes, we got a lot of him, but like it's pretty much all good. And I feel like there's still stuff we can dive into in certain things that we've gotten like mentions of but not actually seen and seeing like him being tempted to leave the Jedi Order for Satine if Satine had just said it to him and seeing some of his adventures as a younger, as a young wing and seeing. So more of his travels in the uh, post in the in the period between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, because we're not going to get Kenobi season two, like stuff like that. I would be down for. Last but not least, let's put him on the list. So, uh, Pete, you said he's dead last for you. Yep. Nick, where are you going? I feel like that's where wherever you I would put him right above Luke. Okay, so that's as far as he'll go. I would have had him above Yoda on this list. All right, so this is the list right now. It is Pat- <laughs> Actually, I don't think six is, is good. I think he should be lower than six after hearing Pete's argument, but I think Luke should be 11, so I had to put him above Luke. All right, so this is Pal- the, the list right now is Palpatine, Maul, Kylo, Yoda, Mace, Obi-Wan, Luke, Qui-Gon, Balin, Ezra, Leia, and Rey. This so if is- there's two, it would be Palpatine and Maul. If there's three, we think it would be Palpatine, Maul, and Kylo, or we hope. We hope so. We know we're not going to give us three sets in a show called Tales of the Jedi here. So, uh, of course not. No, no. So, uh, so I, I guess let's do like what we think. And I say we do two each. Yeah. Like so, we think is going to be in. So, Mike, you want to start us off? Uh, I need a minute to think about this. Right, so, <laughs> my thought process on who it's actually going to be I think it's going to be Palpatine and Ezra. Palpatine and Ezra. And then they want to continue the path of the Sith. When Palpatine fits that that bill, a symbol of Count Dooku, and I think that they're going to want to throw in that animated character that people are just getting to know. And Ahsoka fit the bill last year, or whatever was released it was two years ago last year. Yes. Yeah. Well, whenever season one was released, Ahsoka fit that bill because she was that character that appeared in the Mandalorian, was getting her own show, and everyone's like, "Oh, now I know Ahsoka. I want to learn more about her." And I think Ezra's that guy now. All right. So, P, who are you, who are you actually picking? Who are they going to do? So I actually agree with Nick. I think Ezra is going to be the guy only because of recency bias. Um, Not to say that he doesn't deserve it, but again, I think there's so much more we could do because Ezra is already in the current timeline. Um, But I think on the, on the Sith side, I think we do get Balin Skull. I think we have enough time to make it the way we want to. I think we're sticking with the Ahsoka series. I think Ahsoka when it comes to the other live action series that they have come out with recently has been the best live action series they've come out with. So I think they're going to kind of ride that, you know, that high and they're going to stay with Ezra and Balin. I don't think we're going to stray the path too much. I think we're going to get Luke and Maul. I think those are my picks. I also think another reason I think we're going to get Palpatine is because I, as you mentioned, Mike, it'd be great to see a full season featured yeah. length actual season of Palpatine I don't think we're going to get that and I think they know the fans want to see Palpatine so this is like oh let's just throw him in here okay so our pictures are on the board you want to thank you guys for coming on you really appreciate it. next week we're doing our year in review podcast Pete so we're going to look back at some of the fun stuff all the shows we cover this year no, I'm very excited for it I always love the year in review absolutely it's fun. it's fun stuff it is fun here so I thank you guys for coming on here Pete Pete I'll follow you on social media how can I do that at Consi29 on Twitter, C O N S Y 29, AP Tyler 308 made this background on Reddit. So give him a check out. Awesome here. Uh, Nick, one more time. If you want to follow us on social media, how can I do that? At Sky Guys Podcast. It's on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, and TikTok. Yep. You can also follow me on social media, M Phillips 331. It's M P H I L I P S 331. This week over on the Justin the Suffering Podcast, do some hot stove baseball. You're talking a little Yankees, Nick, to get into what they're doing in the offseason. They're saving number 18 for that pitcher. Yeah, we'll see if he comes. So keep an eye on that. We'll be back next week with our uh, seat with our year in review podcast. We'll tell you what's coming up for the rest of the calendar year. But until then, may the force be with you.